Praise God. All right, so the, the, generally, um, the question usually is why this? Now, one of the things I try to resist, there is a tendency to say women have all the groups, they easily got that, they easily, they easily, where is it for men? If you do that, it's just reaction. And God is not after reaction. But the truth is, men rarely actually get what they need out of life. In fact, one of the biggest problems on earth is that man male that God created, especially in this room, do not receive the attention they should receive. See, you have had more expectation thrown at you in life than help. Expectation. I began to drive at your age. I began to. I began to. I began to. I was speaking to a senior friend yesterday. He gave me some very wonderful stories. Very, very interesting story. I mean, I, I enjoyed the fact that I spoke with him yesterday. And he made one statement that I had known, but did not take too seriously. <laughs> he spoke about a generation that will never change because their orientation is that way. So men haven't found so much of a space where what we need that's why an average man is a bundle of secrets. Plenty, plenty secrets. What you cannot tell anybody. Plenty, plenty. Why? Expectation always comes at you even when there is no help coming at you. Just expectation. Expectation. I, speak, I spoke to a couple of persons in December and I'm like, let me use myself as an example and tell you that an average man you are seeing in December is already approaching depression. An average man. Because number one, the target he set for himself for the year, you don't need a prophet to tell me he didn't meet it. <laughs> <laughs> number two, the target order set for him, I don't need a prophet to tell me, he also did not meet it. Then number three, it's in December people invite you the most to come to their house. Every house you enter has something you could not achieve. <laughs> he said that your friend is the owner, you are still paying rent. You are not just paying rent, you are still trusting God for rent. <laughs> Landlord has warned you before. <laughs> so, I, I was telling some people in December, I'm like, treat men carefully right now. They are going through a lot. Do you get what I mean? So, the man male in the world in which we live today, and that's why there's a lot of malfunction with the male. So when we, when we have forums like this, our intention is to be able to learn, of course, through teaching, unburdening income. If you look at the schedule this time, there's a lot of conversation. So please, open, it's only the teaching sessions we're recording. When we, enter, when we enter community square or village square and start, we are not recording anything. We are not very big on recording at this time when it comes to that. We want to talk. We face pressures, they are real. We face situations, they are real. We are trying to navigate. Now, why am I saying this? Until men begin to confront their fears, be honest about the circumstances, they will not attain the status of their dam that God created. We cannot. It's just like one time that T.D. Jakes was teaching and said something that I believe. You know, God will, not pre God will not bless who you pretend to be. God can only bless who you are. So, the facade and all we make ourselves to be just because we want to get along with the narrative. Today, an average man in the world today is facing expectations they are not prepared for. So somebody came to me <clears throat> to work and I had to, we came through one of our family members that I know. And I had to call the family member and say, let me tell you the truth. This is our law. You people just, somebody just come out of school, you people think any, how do I leave that in? I say, are you ready to continue to service this girl's life like she's still in school? Because somebody needs to, it got to stand somewhere. But the man male, doesn't even finish even the basics of training and education before you expect that he's a miracle worker. And I can tell you, honest truth, 
why the power of God is in you, you are in process. So the expectations of life can actually crush you until you come back to that point where you discount the expectation of the world on you. Men need to come to that point. Discount it. That's where as a married man, for instance, you sit and educate your wife. That is not that the future is bleak or the future is blank, but you see this journey, we're on a journey. In December, I had to go to the village. My father is a very big man now, very, very big. But I came to one personal reality. It helped me, and when I gathered my cousins, I, I used it to help them. My father was not this stable at my age. But right now, he's as powerful as a god, small g. He's able to carry a clan effortlessly. And I look back, because sometimes also the problem of the man male is that the man male sees successful people and judge himself when he's in process. So you are carrying unnecessary pressure. So how to tell them, of course, even people that is bankrolling their life or literally sponsoring, I mean, my father is training a clan. I have to tell them, look at this man not as a picture of where you would drink for life. But as somebody that I'm telling you, even me now that some of you are looking up to, when he was my age, he was not as stable as I am. But in a short time, when his life clicked, he now looks like, and that's why I, I, I criticize a lot of older men who fight well-meaning, born-again, hard-working men who come to marry their daughters. Forgetting that when they married their own wives, they were poorer than the people trying to marry their daughter. But because they have come into harvest, they look at the younger generation like, you, what do you have? You are coming to my house. Uh, no, that's wrong. That's wrong. That's not a place to be. So one of the things that we need to do, and that's why we gather like this as men, is that we need to take away the pressure. There is... Don't inflict yourself with any further pressure. Come to terms with the fact that you are in process. That's one of the things we want to achieve here. Come to terms. I was having a conversation, of course, because of our ministry travels and all. I was having a conversation with a senior friend. Then I, the conversation graduated to me and my wife at home. And we're like, the day will come that we will not need to look at our account statement and see if it's good enough for the visa application we want to make. It will just be natural. Because what happened is, we're supposed to put in our essay stuff because of the hangout later in end of month. But when we heard of some delays that has been happening since December, it became imperative and be necessary to do it immediately. Then we just realized, we were of a demonstration of finances that <laughs> you're traveling. So, kata kata kata, what do you do? Okay, like this, like this. But we had a conversation. Because a lot of times, until you interact with the details of your process, you carry pressure you should not carry. You should not carry. So you depressurize by rec recognizing your process. Just recognize it. See, so I began to put in perspective that December. I just looked at this man. I know my own father. I know when he was broke. I know when he was suffering. Now he doesn't look like money is his brother in his life. Because until, see, the reason why men die cheap, get into things they should not get into, is that they have not depressurized. We must depressurize. In fact, I will share this one straight up. <laughs> Somebody delivered me yesterday of trying to own house right now. <laughs> straight. A senior man, senior to me, with just as friend, but is my... Answers to them, I am the next generation. He shared something with me that I didn't think about. This is Manuel, so get ready for a straight talk conversation. He spent about 3.8 where he is. I used to think that was his house. He said it would be stupid of him too. And this is 3.8 million. Takes care of the house. He made a statement, he said, I'm richer than my landlord. I'll give you the story of Two stories in one. I bought a property for a client who spent about 27 million. We're taking rent 
from there now 1.5 I saw another investment opportunity with another client. I made this same client plug in 25 million. And he's getting ROI of 1 million every month for 12 months. So in 12 months, he's getting 12 million with his 25 million in his hand. Secure. Yes, properties appreciate. And I'll come to the point this guy was sharing with me. But if you weigh these two right now, that was the point he was making. A better use of that 25 million, if all I have is 25 million, would not to be, I'm no longer renting a house. When I'm able to use it to create 12 million in 12 calendar, okay, 14, because there was two months moratorium. In 14 months, this 12 million, 25 million is able to generate 12. So he says, if I get a hundred million and I purchase a house for 80 million, I'm very stupid. So he said, I will rather keep paying that rent. So I went to my, my wife, that plan, that confession, that <laughs> we're scheming one thing like that. I say, scheme is over. I don't like where I live. I've been patiently enduring with it because I've been scheming. <laughs> I say, scheme over. More money in my hand, I will move the rent I didn't want to pay. A higher rent, beautiful rent. More money in my hand now, I will so move. Because, I said, now me, they plug people to people. They do investment as lawyer. Am I just a plugger? Can't I plug myself? <laughs> because I can tie myself down in something. Now, I'll give the other side of the story. I can tie myself down in something that doesn't enable me to create any power and all I have done is to say I'm a landlord. Then me and him now began to discuss liquidating such assets and the hassle it takes and plugging money. He gave me another example of long term where property comes in. Good father he had, very good father. In fact, what he talked about his father re-educated me as a lawyer. He gave me a simple story of his father. Guess how long ago his father died? In the 80s. He did a trust deed. It's like the man saw tomorrow. Seven persons he put on the line of chairing the trust have died in succession. He drew the thing so well. If this person dies, this person. If this person dies, this person. He gave an instruction by his will. None of his property would be sold until his last child is trained to university and is at least 21. Strong trust. He has given me an example of a property in Lagos that they take rent five to 10 years, solid millions. I'm not talking change, it's in VI. The man built it then, 184,000 Naira, almost 50 years ago. Since you don't know who I'm talking about, let me just give you an example. So that property right now, you see, if the dad knows what they are taking on the property, he's going to the trust, the family's off the trust. If the, if it, if the way he described the way the board meets on that money, on the properties, my God. I said, this man, this man, he said watertight, but he said, the man wakes up today and sees what's coming, if the man realizes what is coming out of the property, he'll wake up from the dead. <laughs> <laughs> I'll give you an example of one of the property he said, because it's corporate clients that go for this property that he's talking about. 35 to 40 million a year, and they take five to 10 years at once. So he looked at me and said, if we get angry today and say we are not doing, we are liquidating, we'll be talking billions in property. He began to now give me stories of other people when he was explaining this thing to me. He began to give me stories of people who just as recent as two years ago changed their savings into Forex. He said he knows people, friends, that don't worry right now about doing any business. Investment is producing money. 
when all of that education was going on, that's not where a man wakes up and kills himself. The greatest question a man will ask to get to where God is taking him is to ask, what is my process? Because if you don't ask the process question, pressure will kill you, you will think you have failed. And a lot of times, when a man feels like he has failed, he doesn't even regard the faithfulness of God. How did you come to be at this point? I'll give you another story. This is men only. Let's get very, very honest about this conversation. I remember we just got married. My God, we went to visit a friend. Hey! They had DSTV. <laughs> Jesus. They could watch any Premier League match. My days in my God, where I go to viewing center. My God, can I? Viewing center was my phone. I felt like a failure. I said, this guy is a man and a boy. <laughs> I felt like a total misfit in life. Mm -hmm. Who sent me go marry self? Mm -hmm. Useless pressure. But the Bible said, time and chance. So my dear brothers, understand process. This is not to be... This is not to say, uh, be, you know, just don't do anything. No, there is a process. One of the things that no longer counts in the generation in which we live is that people no longer regard the stories of those who succeed. People just want to succeed. How did they get there? How did they get there? So, you must take responsibility for depressurizing your life. Please take the pressure away. Remove the pressure. I'll give you a story. I'll give you a story. One of our RM guys, I remember when the wife had how many miscarriages in, in 12 months. Man, this family, they were hit. You know what happened? Then she finally, I mean, at the point she was on certain injections just for pregnancy to stay. Just follow my story. We went, we celebrated, we did the task giving. Oh my God, we're so excited. Like, we're so excited. But guess what? Their next child. And for Facebook, I see their poster. You know what I told my wife? I say I'm not angry because the, when I now call them, they're like, hey sir, oh God, we didn't call you for this one, that one. I, I say keep quiet. Like Jonathan's wife, will you keep quiet? <laughs> will you keep quiet? I know what they went through to have a child. So number two can come without noise. Perspective. I say so number two can come without noise. We didn't hear, I mean, it, she was injecting herself daily to keep pregnancy. They removed her from my work, not like Sack. Doctor said, you cannot. She was at home. The cost of each of those injections, I'm talking the first, can break a family. He was working and everything was going into that to be able to have a child. I, I want to now be angry that he not come in the hospital. You know how many people used to come in the labor? Have I not tried? <laughs> Must I add more to my list? You know how many people's labor? Try and be a minister of gospel. <laughs> Try and deal with souls. You will hear all manner. My leg is paining me, sir. I'm in the hospital as we speak. My wife wants to deliver. Let me give her a belay. All manner. Number two came with. That is process. I just thought, I said, do you know you just entered victory of another level? So pregnancy can happen in your house noiselessly. But guess what? When that first episode was going on, it must have felt like the end of the world. Yeah. It must have felt like this is where we die. Yeah. Let me say to you, and this is not prophet lying or just sounding to excite. There is no pressure you are facing that is not temporal. There is no pressure you are facing. In fact, particularly speaking to men, you, you, will not, you will lack the capacity to be a good husband if you don't understand what I just said. There is no pressure you are facing. I give a testimony. You know, Ima was with me that day. Oh, Ima is still bringing people in. Ima was with me that day. R&M closed 2022 with a 1 million entry on 31st. 
it was so nice. One person just we want to sow into what is coming. That's how we pay for Sita Avenue now. It's not. By now, they started doing explanation like actually, <laughs> Sita can be online. <laughs> You know, this generation who can do, uh, you know, virtual. <laughs> yes, sir. So, all those plans we have been planning. <laughs> so, there's nothing we have faced. There is no tempera. Tempera. So tempera. But the man must depressurize by remembering what I just said. If you are not able to see circumstances for what they are, circumstances will turn you to what you are not. So you need to watch it. The responsibility a man must take on is the responsibility to depressurize. Please depressurize. Enjoy where you are. Your effort is being made. The truth is that the sleepless night is already an effort. <laughs> sleepless night at work now. Sometimes you don't wake up, you can't sleep. It's not village people you're thinking, you're planning. But depressurize. See, some things are not going to change overnight. The how story, where did we go to? He explained, I got that concept. Of course, as he spoke of his father, of course, you got the other side of the concept. So that you know what time to plug in this way, what time to plug in that way. And he was like, look, <coughs> if I just told me, some people put you under pressure, don't be under pressure. He told me the people that be putting him under pressure, this house, man. I said, what are you talking about? He said, it's not for lack of fun, but because at this point, doing like this, like this, like this, pays better. And I will come around and do this. Are you getting what I'm saying? So you must depressurize. That's part of what we want to do. We must depressurize. The conversations we are going to have, we will depressurize. Let me tell you, nobody I know on earth has escaped asking them, say, what did I do wrong? Because sometimes part of the yeah, pressure we swallow is that we even start fishing for the sin we sin that made us deserve. Yeah. <laughs> you didn't do anything. <laughs> <laughs> Why are you fishing for what you did wrong? <laughs> oh, 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 just in case. But can I, can, I, can I suggest to you from scripture, they came to Jesus and said, who sinned that this man was born blind? Now, you know to say somebody was born blind, you know he did not participate in the blindness. He did not participate in the blindness. Because he was conceived, where did he have opportunity to sin? Is this side chick he went to have? He didn't commit to he didn't do any, he had done nothing. He was conceived. Then Jesus just looked at them casually. 37 years of my life in darkness. He said that the glory of ah, Jesus, haba, haba, haba. This is not fair. <laughs> we glory. But God was seen from a different perspective. My brothers, there are things we face, there will be occasion for God to be glorified. I can tell you, occasion for God to be glorified. Please depressurize your life. We particularly live in a pressurized generation. Very pressured. Age mates, classmates, schoolmates. You can die cheap debt. Cheap debt. Take away the pressure. Remove it. Keep it aside. Live a normal day. Buy a bottle of wine. Put it in the fridge. Let it chill. Carry glass. Sit down. Drink it with joy. Like, Father, I thank you. I'm, I'm, I'm telling you. I love and follow football. If money could keep King Pele alive, he'd be alive. No, that's, that's the honest truth. So, I mean, to, to even get to 82, he's not God. But he came to that point where earth failed. Everything earth failed. There's nothing earth could offer. As simple as that. You can go into names of people. So for every man that God still allows space here, allows to be here, I must take away certain pressure. I must. This is why men are dying cheap. This is why men are being depressed. This is why men are going through unimaginable stuff. I must depressurize. 
Because one of the things that pressure does to us, it takes away our, uh, our capacity to hope, and hope is the infrastructure on which faith stands. Why? Faith is the substance of things hoped for. So one of the things attempting to happen in your life is to take away the element of hope. And the moment the element of hope is out, faith cannot stand. Because faith itself acts on something you hope for. And guess what? This principle is all around. It's also the principle that operates in the area of weakness. So that any area you have ever struggled, the only thing Satan wants to do is to tell you you will never overcome. That's the strategy. If you know, this is the same strategy. So I must depressurize. I must depressurize. I must sit back eh, and be grateful for where I am. I must sit back and be grateful. Right where I am. Not where I will get to. No, you know, uh, unfortunately, if you will notice, that's why within the body of Christ, we have a way of only giving thanks or rejoicing over what is coming. So we downgrade where we are. We downgrade right here. But the truth is, if you know that it took a miracle to even be here, now in life, you depressurize. You depress, total depressurize. You know, I told somebody, see, I'll, I'll just share some testimonies. December was supposed to be very rough. Very rough. I'm telling you. A couple of things were happening, I'll share one or two. So after we formally close office, I was just going to sit in the office. Just going to sit in the office. I can't kill myself. I cannot. One deal that should have happened didn't happen. One pe person I worked for on trust, I had already calculated and finished the money, decided not to do the deal again when I had finished my own part of the work as a lawyer. And he said, person I respect, what do I do? So I go and sit in the office, play music, read Bible, pray, punch phone where I enter flesh, go back to spirit, <laughs> punch phone, go back to spirit. Somebody just called me, they are buying a property, but they are doing down payment, I've never done that kind of deal. They are buying the property for 100, the person was ready to deposit 50 million, they are calling me, the person is wanting to deposit 50 million, bam. And they were looking for where to house the document until the date of paying the balance. And I charge. The document is on rent with me right now. <laughs> I love God, my God. <laughs> the document is on rent. It's currently occupying space with me. Ha! <gasps> that deal. I was just for me like. I was not excited. <laughs> oh God. I see, come and see for me. I was for me like I was composed. The amount they are about to pay me, I had calculated it. <laughs> the amount was already distributed. <laughs> Just call me to a rent space. The whole document. My God. I'm like, please, I need calls like this, Sevra. <laughs> that was deep into how many days to Christmas? So like, wow. So I should sit here and kill myself for a God that can move in the way I do not know. Mm. I should bother myself. Because I tell you the truth, this weekend may not be over before you get a call that totally blows your mind. Straight. I mean straight. It's not, it's not go calm or some totally like, shoop. like what just happened? And stories upon stories are bound in life that tells you this. So we must depressurize. We, must, we can't be the men that God... See, the truth is, Satan's number one strategy to take the man away from who God makes him is pressure. Finish. So to who God made us, we must consciously tell pressure, I cannot fall for you. I can't. Hope cannot leave our heart. We must judge even our history right. See, God is not, God doesn't patronize anybody, let's be honest. If God wants you dead, you'll be dead. Straight. He doesn't patronize us. If God has you here, there's a plan. If there's a plan, why should I let pressure sink me? So we must look at that as men. We must look at that as men. We must 
be careful. All right, one scripture so that it's not like we didn't do scripture at all. Okay, one scripture. First Timothy five. Let's just do scripture and um, pray and movie for tonight. Thank you, Jesus. Okay, no, it's second Timothy. Did I say second? No, first. I'm right. Mm -hmm. We will come to that. Hold on first. It's, it's first Timothy 6. Just wait. We'll come to that. Thank you. All right. First Timothy 6. Ooh. Praise God. So first Timothy 6, um, 17. Yeah. Charge them that are rich in this world. That they be not high minded. Uh huh. Nor trust in uncertain riches. So that's not where our trust is even going to. <laughs> that's not that's not where we're putting our mind, yeah? Go ahead. But in the living God mm -hmm. who giveth us richly all things to enjoy. He gives us richly all things to enjoy. Who will give? It's God that we give all things richly to enjoy. Right? Now, so that even when we attain, our trust is not in the attainment. Alright? That's the depressurizing. Let's read 18. Verse 18. That they do good. Mm -hmm. That they be rich in good work. Mm -hmm. Ready to distribute. Mm -hmm. Willing to communicate. Are, are you seeing all of that? Yeah. Now, see. <laughs> uh, let me say this in the context of husband, even to the younger men who would be husbands. You see that verse 18 we just read is so, so, so deep that they do good, that they be rich in good works, ready to distribute, willing to communicate. A man who makes money through pressure cannot fulfill that scripture. The only man who can fulfill that scripture is a depressurized man. There are people who can't even live in God's fullness plus all they have because their trust is in uncertain riches. See, what God wants to attain with us, depressurizing by, is very deep. In the space where we are, I've seen too many men rather destroyed by money than make a good home with it. Why? The basics were not dealt with. For instance, when we're talking about covetousness and comparison, if a man doesn't depressurize from it, you become a monster before he knows it. Money will enter his hand, but he will struggle all his life to catch up, meet up, and beat those he's in competition with. Whether he knows it or not, he's living for something else. That's another brand of pressure. Big brand of pressure. No pressured man can make a good husband. It's not possible. Some of the best moments of my life, I boast in the Lord. It's when my wife wonders why oh, I'm acting like nothing is at stake when everything is at stake. Because she will lose me and all I should represent if the pressure of life come at me. Even ministry-wise, like some of those reflections I've been writing, there are certain things we will do the way we can do, not the way any other person is doing it. The Lord be with them where they are doing it. And that's why I can tell you, because there are graces all over this room. Some stories I know are not palatable. Some people are putting up a big show in ministry, they are sitting in debt. For what? Why? God called me to, so that I can call him, or he called me to do his work. Sit, carry, yeah, 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 things, because I want to do what I must not do. So it's so important to come to this point it's a child them that are rich in this world that they do not be high-minded. Why? The mind must have been dealt with before they even got the money. That's where we must be. Because for money, money is sitting in this room. Money, real money. You know, like, like I always ask, what becomes of the man who has everything he wants and can afford everything? What's left? Because God is not afraid to take us there. He is actually taking us there. But what becomes of that man? 
We need common when it should come up. We lead with the things the Lord is instructing or the Lord will instruct. That's the ultimate aim of the depressurizing he's teaching us now. Because God wants to bring us to that point where nothing in this world can satisfy straight. Nothing. I see nothing. And that's why people even backslide. When you begin to question things, you just realize what's the use of your faith. And that's where I've been questioning the brand of Christianity that people are pushing in this country that is so materialistic. What's, it, where, what's this brand? We must depressurize. Money we will have. Money we have. Life we have. More life we will have. But we must depressurize. Because when we depressurize, what we are forming is character. That's what we are forming. In fact, the extent to which you can act irrespective of the pressure is the revelation of your maturity. The extent to which you can hold you irrespective of the pressure is the revelation of your maturity. So every time we depressurize, what we are doing, we are growing. We are growing. We are not letting circumstance dictate our narrative. We are looking at him and judging him faithful. Saying like Job, although what stares me in the eyes is the grave, I know my Redeemer lives. I had fainted unless I had believed that I would see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living, not in another land. I had fainted, I would have died. Both I believed. When we begin to take responsibility for depressurizing and not blaming God for the existence of pressure, we must depressurize. And where you begin to depressurize is not in the place where the pressure is gone. It's in the place where you are able to hold it irrespective of the presence of the pressure. Alright? So, so important. Let's finish that reading. Laying up in store for themselves a good foundation against the time to come that they may lay hold on eternal life. O Timothy, keep that which is committed to thy trust, avoiding profane and vain babblings and oppositions of science falsely so called. We some professing have heard concerning the faith, grace be with thee. Last scripture, I said one, but let me add this one. Hebrews 13, 5. We'll just read that scripture and close this pressure. Mata. So, verse 20. Verse 20. Yeah. So, Hebrews 13, verse 5. We must. Read that version in TPT. Okay, yes, please go ahead. So, my son Timothy. Don't forget all that has been deposited within you. Don't forget all that has been deposited within you. Escape from the empty echoes of men. Shh. A question of twisted reasoning. Okay. Please take that. Escape what? Escape from the empty echoes of men. Empty echoes of men. And the perversion of twisted reasoning. And the perversion of twisted reasoning. Wow, my God. And those who claim to possess this so-called knowledge have already won that for the true faith. Wow. May God's grace empower you always. Straight up. Straight up. Let's focus on what matters. Final scripture. Let your conversation be without covetousness and be content with such things as you have. For he had said, I will never leave thee nor forsake thee. That's our depressurizing point. I know whose I am. I know who is with me. So guys, you know what? The truth is, wherever I am, the greatest factor of depressurizing, I know who is with me. And men must learn this lesson. We take responsibility for too much. Mm. I'll give you straight examples. I hold the view. So I teach it. That looking at scripture, I'm not responsible for my basic. I'm responsible for multiplication. Because God will hold me as a steward. What I gave you, what did you do with it? So, I am God's child. He pays my bills. When there's no food, it is God's store in my house that is empty. It happened to be his own voice in my house. Like on Monday now, God's children in my custody are resuming school. Me, I'm just a custodian. They are his children. He will pay their school fees. 
Are you understand what I'm saying? Give pressure, give the pressure to the owner. OJ, I'm just a custodian. The person in charge of your life is up there. He has to supply. I don't know if you get what I'm saying. We must deep. We take responsibility for too much. We want everything to be. We want everything to be. And that's why we're killing men. Men are dying, you know. Seriously. Men are dying. Let me stretch this to just touch Mary small. If you are not able to transmit peace to your spouse, you would set them up to set you up later. And that's the problem. Your partner must see your vulnerability and your dependence on God. You know why a lot of people carry themselves into early grave? Carry themselves into depression? They have posed like El Shaddai, Whoa. so they shall die. Die, they shall die. He hook me, I'll be crying unto the Lord. You come and see my tears, men also cry. The reason we will not put our hands to evil in this life is that we learn to depressurize by going to the altar. I close this session with this story. I remember a couple of years ago, I took a very major decision in my life that left me super stranded in this town. Not that I was not stranded before I took that decision, but the strandedness increased. <laughs> so one of those nights, I was working from that GT in a boat, it was my office, it was night. And have you ever ordered boat until boat started ordering? <laughs> you order and order, they cancel, they cancel, they cancel, they cancel. Uber blocked me. Say I was canceling too much. It's because you are giving me this lesson. I can't even give me a ride there for five minutes away. To come and take me five minutes journey or seven minutes journey. So I was walking. That was the night eh, that for the first time in my life, I found the justification for bank robbery. I said, see this GT, if I can just enter. <laughs> I can just enter this GT. <laughs> I just have access to the vault or whatever they call it. I go back. <laughs> I go to the park. The park. Pressure. I said, I go to the park. I was walking back. Now, small remain. Now, in the morning, they for five minutes. You know those big, big manhole? Have you seen manhole they call it? Have you? I narrowly missed one. I was just walking like a ghost. Thinking, thinking, thinking. Do you know how you are one step, big one? I will not come out that night. Cars are passing. Who will hear you shout? I was one step when I saw it. Big one. I, first of all, I thought about the nature of injury. I have been there. Big. Between that angle, if you want, there's one big chest. That, that side, there's one. There, there is a school. There's one it big like that. This one that you put cables and pass all those. Narrow as hell. Hey! And what was I thinking at that point? If we thought, I said, this is why people rob. I said, this, I said, this is why people rob bank. <laughs> See, he said I had his way, but you'd have been caught since. <laughs> because at your desperation moment, somebody has not told you to join a kanga. <laughs> <laughs> They start with chicken, then goat, then human being. But Satan wasn't so smart. Because you have been at points where if somebody made one suggestion, they'll just convince you. See, let me tell you, if you have not done your whole before, I've not done it. It's because Satan was not smart. They called that 30 points. <laughs> somebody just said, just computer. <laughs> so, I went down my own, not out of better meditation, no. I don't think. <laughs> I said, this is why people run bank. I'm telling you. Hey, that's when I came to myself. Like, Jesus, pressure is real. Real. And you know, part of why I took the way I had walked from my office to the bank. Can I also tell you part of what happened that night? There was money I was expecting that I didn't enter, so I could not cash money. That's when I was walking back. Ordering and ordering, nothing was going. 
This is why I'm talking about depressurizing. Part of what I was also trying to do was to go home strong. Nobody told me to come home strong. Because that makes me a bad husband. I should come and sit, particularly that God has blessed you with a good person. I say, man, I'm going through a tough time. You know why that happened? I was trying to go home strong. I wanted to go home macho. I wanted to go home in charge. I wanted to go home ultimate warrior. I counseled myself back to sense and went home to the partner that God gave me and we carried life together forward. Depressurize. Because every time you don't depressurize, you start denying the infrastructure that God has placed around you. The brother you can call, you will not call. The person you can open up to, you will not open up to. The person you can say, please pray with me, I'm going through a tough time, you will not. If I, if I take statistics now, the last time you were in a tough time and told a brother to pray for you, it may be seven years ago, whereas you have gone through 17,000 trials. Because you want to be a man. Be a man! With your 2K. <laughs> Am I lying? Want to be a man? Especially in church. All of you be very suit and tie. <laughs> and that's that day that that wicked Satan will just make the person that is using the iPhone that is 800,000 to sit next to you in church. They are just wondering, do you know 800,000 pay my rent for two years? <laughs> they are holding it as a phone. You must be wicked. The person will never cause trouble with you. You don't get trouble with them. Or you just see the person where well, one can shoot. <laughs> Praise God. Hallelujah. You must depressurize. Because it's when we depressurize, we can actually run the journey like we should. And there are examples all over scripture. Paul was so confident in every situation. And he's making tent. Even how Paul received support from the churches was with confidence. He ministered to my need. In fact, that's one of the things I used to charge my fellow ministers in this generation. If you have need, call it a need. Don't jugo jugo the thing and collect money from, from our hand. You have need. We need to do this. Paul depressurized to the point that the fact that he was a minister unto a church did not mean he could not tell them I had need. You minister to my need. So God bless it. I had the capacity to bless, but I had need. Straight. That was the pressurizing. The reason is he for me, for me, for me, for me. Hey, I have a lot of my contemporaries. For me, for me, for me. Like God called them to form or to bless. For me, for me, for me. We are not the pressurizing. There are certain pressures we can't carry. The car I drive is the car I drive. The house I live is the house I live. The clothes I have is the clothes I have. What my children can wear is what they can wear. The school they can attend is the school they can attend. You must depressurize. And transmit the depressurizing. There are things my wife can't expect of me. If I tell my wife right now we're going to travel, she knows economy. If I have the engine, she knows I'll buy the engine ticket for now. Not because I don't love her. Can we depressurize? Can I curtail even the expectation of those around me? He knows. It's really the last one. She's the one that makes the most demand. This December, she knows how many times I told her, if you want one more thing in this house, go and pray. That he doesn't have money. She now say, but I saw money in your bag. She said, not that kind of money. You can't do anything. She now say, what can 3,000 do? I say, you don't understand. 3,000 cannot do anything. How many have been interrogating me? Say, she now say, are you saying in your account? <laughs> Nothing. I say, yes. In fact, the last one I told her, what is in my account cannot buy you snack. <laughs> Go and pray. Go and pray. I say, hey, hey. I say, right now, daddy cannot. The only way daddy can is you will go and pray. And that's how I make a habit. I come back and say, by the grace of, did you pray? Because something happened though. So I'm going to do X, Y, Z. X, Y, like we always have gifts under Christmas tree. They don't give this year. When she overtaxed me, I said, you went to Dubai in August. That was your Christmas. <laughs> you did not just travel. We bought a lot of things, right? 
I said, this year is not a year of gift under three. It's a year of travel. You travel. <laughs> Wait, am I lying? No. I'm, I can't lie to you now. Collect your transmission. I'm a transmitting company. I transmit. I transmit depressurization. I depressurize everybody around me. Collect your share of depressurizing. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. No, but, but we get what I'm Please learn to depressurize. The pressure is a lot. The expectation on a man is too much. I, I don't know about you. People, do people call you for 500,000, 1 million? <laughs> do they call you? <laughs> you know how many persons have been stranded after Christmas? Me that didn't travel. You, you travel to be stranded. So me, I should sit in the future <laughs> and be removing people from village. Both they are not telling I'm sorry right now, I can't help you. Eh? Standard language. Not because I want to be. I can't. I can't. People carry their own emergencies and make it your emergency. No, it's not possible. Even today, I coach somebody. I have children that are also going back to school on Monday. And as we are sitting, your sister is also trusting the Lord. Did I send you to a village? I sat in Abuja. You went to a village. You are calling me. You need to be by. Yeah, I have a village, oh. I'm not a city boy. I was born through a, a community. Depressurize. Learn to say no without feeling guilty. Straight. I'm sorry, I wish I can help. But right now I cannot. In fact, one of the things I depressurize from is over giving you my details. Why should I be telling you, even me, I've not paid rent, I've not this, I've not, I don't have to give you the details. Right now I cannot help. Sorry. So I should now, I should now out of guilt, try to give you the background of my cannot. I cannot help you right now. It is well. Brethren, we must depressurize. The pressure must go down. Let's not kill ourselves. Because the progress God wants us to make, you can't make it if you don't depressurize. You must take away the pressure. Take the journey as a journey. Take the journey as a process. Depressurize. Depressurize. We have all lived long enough to watch men make their journey happen in life and change their stories. Why? They kept on on the journey and they didn't kill themselves for what was. Praise God. Amen. Let's pray. First of all, start repenting of the sin of pressure. They are carrying too much. Mm -hmm. Let's let's repent. Let's repent. Let's repent. Mm -hmm. He said we should cast our care, not to carry it. We should not carry load that is not our own. Sometimes overthinking what the future holds. Jesus said, sufficient unto the days his own trouble. Matthew 6. Take no thought tomorrow. This one, eh, eh, please. Thank God we are planning. Oh, thank you, Lord Jesus. Can we just yield our heart to him? He wants to have that heart free of this pressure. We yield our hearts. We yield our heart. We yield our heart. We repent. Everywhere I've been carrying load, you didn't give up. He says, burden is light. His yoke is easy. His own yoke is easy. His yoke is easy. His yoke is easy. All the things that has given us sleepless nights as men, put us in depressive state. We are grateful for life. We are grateful for hope. We are grateful for the capacity. We are sorry that we did not see what you saw. And we want to kill ourselves with today, today. No. We yield our heart and say, forgive us. We remain in trust for you. We put our trust. We put our trust. We lay it, we lay it down. All the worries, all the pressure, pressure. You brought us here. You have us here for a reason. Oh, yes, Lord Jesus. I lay every burden down. I lay down. I lay down. You are able to take me to the plan. You are able to take me through the process. You are faithful and just. You say, for you will never leave nor forsake. Ah, never, 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 never. Never, never leave nor forsake. That's your word. Oh, I believe it. I believe it. I believe it. I believe it. I put my faith in you.